I'd love, uh, I'd love to invite Dr. Ramajaya Sundar to talk about mantra from metaphysics to biophysics. Ramaji is not only a PhD from Cambridge University, UK, but also a BAMS. So she is a doctor who's a doctor. Let's welcome Ramaji and listen to what promises to be an interesting talk. Namaste, Ramaji. Can I have the first slide? So it's a great honor for me to be here at the first Indic Thoughts Festival and I thank the organizers for the invite. Manana trayate iti mantraha, so goes the definition. And it, the translation is that which protects because of repeated utterance. Next one. Does this fall in the realm of metaphysics? Is it going to open the doors to different levels of awareness and reality? Next one. Or is it squarely in the domain of biophysics, affecting changes at both the physical and physiological level? Next one. To even address these two questions, we need to understand how Vedas perceives the human system. Because mantras are an inseparable part of Vedas. And the best way to visualize this or understand this is to see how Ayurveda, which is again a part of Veda, understands and perceives the human system. So you see in the figure that there are four domains that Ayurveda uh, uses to understand the human system. You have a structural domain, you have a physiological domain, you have a psychological domain, and a domain of consciousness, which is the subtlest one. Each of these domains is um, interconnected, and I have mentioned at the top, at the side. So the, for example, the structural domain is interconnected using various channels. These are called srotas in Ayurveda. These channels can be uh, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, or uh, nerves. The physiological domain is connected network within by parameters which are defined by vata, pitta, and kapha, which are subclassified into 15 types each. The psychological domain, the psychological domain is uses the parameters of sattva, rajas, and tamas, which we have heard the other speakers mention also. And these are subclassified into 16 subtypes. And then you have the domain of consciousness, which is networked through the levels of the koshas, the pancha koshas. Now what is interesting is that each of these domains is also interconnected. You can see the area of overlap. The structural and the functional physiological domain is connected through parameters of vata, pitta, and kapha, and so are the other domains. So each of these domains actually influence each other. And what is easy to measure is what happens at the physical and the physiological domain. And you can draw the inference uh, from these uh, to the, uh, the psychological domain. Next one. So there are three things that can be done with mantra. You can, one can read the mantra, one can chant it, or one can meditate upon. Each of these three activities is going to cause different changes in the brain. Let's see what modern science has got to offer to measure these changes. Next one. So this slide shows the uh, electrical activity of the brain when words are spoken or when the same words are heard. So the words are the same, but the first, the top two figures show the electrical activity in the brain when it's spoken. The next one is when it's heard. You can see the difference in the electrical activity in the brain. The next slide. So the, this one shows the changes in the blood flow when the same words are heard or seen or spoken or thought of. Next one. Now I am going to show a very interesting experiment which, is, which can show another aspect of uh, mantra or sound. Nick, uh, give a click, please. So this is an inverted speaker. And now we are going to fill it with water. And then you can switch the music on. It can be any music. It can be a sound. It can be a swara or a note. Next one. And with proper lighting, you will see a picture like this. So this is called cymatic photography, and which helps visualize representation of um, visual representation of sound energy or the vibrational energy. Next one. I'm going to so, uh, show you some interesting uh, um, patterns which have been affected by different swaras and sounds. So the pioneers of the cymatic photography or um, uh, it's a German physicist, Ernst Schlatney. 
and he was also father of acoustics and the Swiss uh, uh, physician and scientist Hans Jenny. Next one. So this slide shows the uh, experiments which were conducted in the early stages of cinematography. So you can see that the person is playing, that's Hans Jenny's hands there. Uh, he's playing the notes in the piano and then connected to that is a metal plate over which very fine corn flour has been sprinkled with different notes, different patterns were being formed by the by the corn flour and the one you see on the right side is a very simple rudimentary experimental setup with a frequency generator and a metal plate over it so you can either sprinkle corn flour or even very finely ground sand and different notes sounds will give different rise to different ri uh, give rise to different patterns next one so these are some of the uh, patterns which have been photographed uh, on water, the vibrations of the sound gives these patterns and with proper lighting. Uh, so this has been done by a sound engineer. So you can see the beautiful uh, patterns from, these are all notes from the piano. Next one. So this one gives a full range of patterns, visual patterns that can be captured with proper lighting on water. Next one. So. The, the one on the left side is a pattern that's formed in water when a 40 hertz sine wave is, uh, uh, is, is given to that, given to the water. And the next one is a 52.8 hertz vibration which can be captured on the water. Next one. Now this is a vibration of a 27 hertz sine wave in a 54 millimeter cup of water and the next slide is a very interesting superposition of these vibrations which is visual representation of that sine wave on the MR image. So what you see on the left side is a MR image of uh, it's the axial section of brain. You can see the eyes and the nose and the gray matter and the white matter and the vibrations which have resulted from the 27 hertz sine wave has been superimposed on the uh, MR image. You can wonder about the rationale between uh, for this uh, superimposition. It's simple, our body is made up of 80% water and the brain also is made up of 80% water and the vibrations that you can capture in a cup of water can be captured would occur in the brain as well. Also, there would be some attenuation because of the viscosity of the tissues. And you can see that the center part of that pattern is coinciding with the pineal gland. So traditionally, we say that the pineal gland represents the third eye, according to the, uh, the Hindus. Next one. Now, I'm going to shift gear a bit and uh, go on to some studies that I have carried out uh, on the effect of mantra. So just a very, very, uh, very, very brief um, introduction to the technique I have used because I think it's important to understand the parameter that's being measured. So this magnetic resonance spectroscopy studies the magnetic properties of the nucleus. So we all know that uh, any physical uh, structure is made up of atoms and molecules and atoms are made up of protons and neutrons which which are in the nucleus and then the electrons. So the technique actually looks at the subatomic, the magnetic field associated with the subatomic particle. Next. So any charged particle in motion is going to have a magnetic field associated with it. It can be a linear motion or a rotational motion or a spinning motion. You, you saw that motion of the protons there. So it spins on its own axis just like Earth spins on its own axis. And because it's a charged particle, it's going to have a magnetic field associated with it. And it is, next one, it is this magnetic field occurring uh, associated with the nucleus that is measured in magnetic resonance spectroscopy. It can give information from molecules to the level of organs. Next one. So for my study, I chose Gayatri Mantra because it's considered the most potent and powerful mantra. Next one. And uh, Gayantam Trayate Iti Gayatri, uh, that which protects those who repeat and meditate upon it. There are so many attributes to what Gayatri Mantra can do. I'm not going into the details. I'm sure that uh, most of you would know uh, the, the kind of uh, the importance and power of Gayatri Mantra. Next one. So this is the protocol I used. The study was for a period of nine months. The first three months, uh, so there were about 30 volunteers. They were divided into groups of 10 each. 
The first group recited Gayatri Mantra in Sanskrit, Gayatri Mantra as it is. The second group recited that English translation. The third group did not, uh, there was no chanting, there was no uh, 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 reciting any mantra. So all these volunteers the, who recited Gayatri Mantra, they used to uh, get up at 2.30 or 3 in the morning and they recited it for 108 times. And the, the people, the volunteers who chanted it in English also did the, exactly the same thing. They used to get up at 2.30 or 3 in the morning and then recite it 108 times. The, so the first three months were baseline study, as you can see in the graph there. And then for the next three months, there were, um, they were chanting. And then it was a follow-up period of three months. And every week, MR spectrum was taken. Next one. So this is how a MR spectrum uh, would look like. So this is the MR spectrum from normal human brain. You can see some neurochemicals here. For example, NAA stands for N-acetyl aspartate. It can be found only in neurons. So the information that you get from NAA represents, gives uh, information about neurons. And you can see the glutamate and creatine and choline. These are all neurochemicals that's found in brain. And you see the arrow and then two uh, voxels, there two squares there. So this spectrum has been obtained from one of those voxels, one of those uh, squares. Now in this particular study, uh, looking at the effect of Gayatri Mantra, what I had done is I had obtained spectrum from from both the hemispheres. So there was spectrum from the left hemisphere, and that is the frontal part of the brain, which is involved in thought processes. And uh, so then I acquired another one from the right hemisphere. I was looking at the asymmetrical uh, distribution of these neurochemicals and whether there is any change that is affected by Gayatri Mantra. Next one. So this is, uh, the, the, this is the result of what happens to the asymmetrical distribution of neurochemicals uh, when Gayatri Mantra is recited. So you see that there are random variations before the Gayatri Mantra was recited. And then as the Gayatri Mantra recitation starts, you know, the, then for the next three months, you see a reduction in the asymmetry. You see it coming towards unity, so which means that there is a balance of neurochemicals between the left and the right hemisphere and the follow-up period. So there are three months after the chanting is stopped, you can still see that the effect of the reduction in asymmetry is sustained. Next one. So language does matter. Uh, because you see the data here. The first one shows what happens when Gayatri Mantra is recited, chanted in, uh, uh, in Sanskrit. You see the reduction in the asymmetry. And in the group which were reciting the Gayatri Mantra or reading out the English translation 108 times uh, every day for three months, you see that the random variations persist. So language does seem to have play a role at least in changing the causing some changes in the neurochemicals. So mantra seems to be a key to different realms. What I have shown and what is possible with the modern scientific tools is measurement at both the physical and physiological level. There are some measurements which are also possible at the psychological level, but you know, even changes in the physiological level means that there are, we can infer that uh, there would be changes at the psychological level. So next one. So if we go back to this figure, because the entire human system is connected, networked, it doesn't matter whether it's metaphysics or biophysics, each one is going to influence the other, other domains. Whatever happens, so the results I have shown happens at the biophysical realm. And it's not so easy to me measure what happens at the metaphysical realm, but what we can infer is, if something, the metaphysical realm will happen at the level of the consciousness, and that will percolate down as uh, changes uh, at both the physiological and the uh, psychological as well as the structural domain. Thank you. I think that's the last slide. Yeah, thank you.